What's going on guys and welcome back to Cedar Flags. In this episode, we're going to be working behind the Alpine River Rush station building near the queue and we're going to be connecting all that up and actually launching the ride. But this episode's kind of special for a few different reasons. Uh, the first reason is we actually got the adventure pack, which gives us a uh, a lot of cool new things that I'm gonna be kind of talking about. I'm really excited for the foliage that they give us and you're actually seeing me put a few of that those in right there. Uh, so uh, yes, the second thing is that this episode was entirely filmed on the live stream over on Twitch. So yes, it took uh, two sessions of about three or four hours a piece and we had a few people come out and hang out and it was pretty cool. So there was actually a, a few really good suggestions from the chat that we actually use. And I'll be pointing that out as we go through this. But yes, if the quality of this video is maybe a little lesser than it has been in the past, that's why. But don't worry, it's really not that bad, especially because we're speeding all of this up. But uh, yeah, well, in the live portion, everything will be really crisp and clean like it has been for the life of the channel. Anyway, what are we doing right now? Well, we're going through and putting some foliage back here. Now, there are a few different weird little spots around this, and this little corner that we've been working on was one of those where the terrain was actually lowered down for the station to be built, and then as soon as you put a path down, you can't actually like raise or lower the terrain anymore. It locks it underneath paths, and I believe underneath stations. So we just kind of had to hide that a little bit with some foliage there, no big deal. And then of course we go back into the queue building itself, where we had a little bit of a, a lapse in scenery. We, we didn't have anything over here. So I figured putting a, a few of these barrels down just kind of fit the flow of everything. And then of course, obligatory uh, wagon wheel. But uh, we're moving back outside here and we're putting some bamboo in. Now the foliage that we actually got through this new adventure pack is awesome. There's a lot of really cool like ground cover and like really low lying bushes and that kind of stuff and bamboo is in there as well. Now, the kind of strange thing about the bamboo is that it really doesn't fit much of like the other theming around this area. And I'll be honest, a lot of the stuff that we put in in this episode doesn't fit like the theming of the alpine feel or these like Douglas fir trees that we have. So there might need to be a little bit more work done around the area to kind of mix all that in. But you're actually seeing <laughs> Uh, yeah, I went to go through and put some bins down, and uh, they had some people walking through the wall up the stairs at a very odd angle, so we had to fix that. But anyway, uh, back to what I was saying about the foliage, there's a little bit of a mismatch, I think, at the end of this episode, and we'll, we'll, I'll show you that when we go into the live portion, where it looks like there's just some brand new bushes and it just doesn't fit the theme. And I think they're probably like more tropical themed bushes anyway. But I feel like over here, we're kind of creating this new theme, if you will. And I, I feel like the bushes aren't like absurd in in like their misplacement of the thing. I don't, I don't know what I'm trying to say here. It's just, I think it's a very weird climate that our park is supposed to be in. And I use supposed to in quotes, but uh, I feel like we're breaking that a little bit. But in the end, I think this is okay because theme or yeah, theme parks do this a lot, and it really is just to bring a new ambiance to the area. So I think that we can kind of move past and suspend disbelief when it comes to like what plants should be growing where. And uh, to be honest, I'm I'm not really good at like c keeping things consistent and real to a theme, I think. I, I feel like as I've built through this game, I, I tend to like build something just the way that I feel like it should be built. And then occasionally there's just a weird theme like where where we had kind of a theme going in the area and then something's completely different. And I, I feel like I've talked about that before, but I, I think with this ride in particular, we, we kind of go off in that little bit of a direction there. But we're going to work a little bit more of this new kind of feel that we have going on in when we go ahead and decorate the rest of the track or the waterway. Is this? It's. I guess it technically is a track. But yes, we're going to be doing that in the next episode, I believe. Just finally getting all of the scenery done around the, uh, the river, if you will. 
and then we can go ahead and get a POV video put together and all that kind of stuff. So stay tuned for all of that. But in the meantime, all we've been doing is working meticulously on trying to get these rocks placed. And I love the little rope barrier walls that we have here. They're on a bit of an angle as if they were holding the terrain up and trying to prevent anything from falling into the river and onto the ride. So I love that little detail around here. But I also like that we hit, we just went through and we started to kind of, I guess, put rocks on the edge of the river just to give it a little bit more texture. And I feel like we're going to be doing that around the rest of the track as well, just to try to create the more of a river feel than just having the terrain kind of like smoothly go into the ride itself. So even though we are covering both sides of the track with terrain, this little like detail work is giving the ride such a nice experience. And I, I don't know, there, it can't be said enough that every little detail needs to be reflected when you're building in this game. You got to think about everything. And we'll be talking about that more when we get into the bridge at the end of this time lapse, because there were some things in that build in particular that you kind of had to think as like a, a carpenter to get things to like make sense. So back to the rocks. There are so many rocks being placed in this episode. It's kind of uh, <laughs> unreal, but uh, we're moving on to the fencing and the just like the fence work around this queue and to be honest, it's it's kind of I, I started to kind of go in one direction. You saw that with the little uh, post fences, if you want to call it that. But we eventually settle on this rope that we have actually on the inside of the building. We're carrying that rope feel out here. And what we're doing right now is making a post for it. And this is one of the things that was suggested in the Twitch chat. And that was to use the end of the shovel and use that as a post. Now, we mix that in with another pole, and it actually creates this really awesome post for the fence. Now, it looks like when we put the ropes in, which we are doing right now, you'll see it looks like the rope has an attachment point on this post. So doing this just adds a little bit of like realism, and it really looks great. It looks so good, and this post is like four total pieces between all of it so yes this is one of those things that the twitch chat was all about and I, I i cannot say it enough this turned out so nice and i love how this all looks now the actual posts are different from the inside which is fine it, it is kind of nice to differentiate that a little bit but um i i think out here carrying that rope out from the inside is also kind of nice because it, it just has that continuity between the theming now, I was originally kind of trying to do something maybe different out here, but I feel like tying it all together is the best bet, and it really, in the end, comes out pretty nice. Now, placing all of these was kind of annoying because it was... This this whole section of the queue is on a bit of a slope and some uneven terrain. So what we end up doing here is actually just placing the all of them down in the right spot first and then we're going to go ahead and lift them all up to be in their proper heights now the other thing that's really cool about this post and fence system is that you can actually tie multiple ropes to the same attachment point on the other post and it looks natural it looks so good and i, I cannot say enough how awesome this all turned out but we're getting toward the end of placing these and then you're going to see me go in and start to do the adjustment on the height which really wasn't that bad. I thought it was going to be a lot more annoying than it is, but uh, it, it didn't come out that bad. Now, the fencing around the queue is missing in a couple spots, which we can kind of point out later on. That was kind of intentional. I didn't want to have to have the queue go all the way around. Now, there are kind of obvious points where you want to have a fence on a queue. You don't want people jumping the line, I guess, and going when you have two when it zigzags back and forth and it's really close together you don't want people to just like go over there so you want to kind of divide that up and then obviously we have this water ride next to us so we wanted to contain the guests and make sure that they couldn't accidentally or on purpose go and jump into the water ride so we tried to keep that in mind as we were placing the the fencing around the queue now what we're doing right here is creating a little bit of like a flower bed and some landscape uh accents i guess 
And this is one of the spots where the Q is not gonna have a fence because there's really no point for it to have one because there's just, like I was saying earlier, there's no way anybody was gonna jump the line or anything like that. And there was no point to have it block what we are doing here. So we're using the terrain. As I said, it's a little off level and there's a little bit of height difference around here. And we're actually using that to our advantage here. And we're creating kind of like this two tiered planter here. And we had to go through and actually delete the queue and level out some terrain. Like I was saying way early on, it, you cannot level terrain that's underneath a path, which was annoying. And when I deleted that path, I was very scared that it would go back in, but it did and it's fine and we carry on. But uh, we're using these boulders like we have been around this area. Like I said, lots of rock work in this and stonework in this episode but we're using it to outline this path like we have, I believe, before. And probably over by Gravity Mod, I think, is where we did this kind of stuff, where we're using the stones to create kind of like a divider or an edge of a flower bed. Now, we're going to go back in and actually put some foliage and, and trees and that kind of stuff down here. And it looks so good from a distance. And the one thing that I will say is if you're building a flower bed like this, you really don't want grass in there. So you always want to do mulch or dirt or a mixture of both. I've been really keen on doing the the dirt first and then going over the top of the dirt with a light mulch mulching, I guess, the the paint and it it comes out pretty nice. It's not like straight mulch, but it's not it's it's kind of like a dirty mulch, I guess. It it doesn't seem like it's manicured perfectly but it does look like it was mulch and maybe there's some of it has faded away since then but yeah it still looks like a planter bed so yes um you're seeing a lot of the new foliage go down and there's just something about it it's it's way different than what we have been doing like i kind of talked about a bunch earlier i think it is gonna work because the bamboo in particular obviously probably wouldn't be growing here and it's fine because it's got that like broadleaf feel on the top and we have been putting some different trees down here instead of the pine trees that we've pretty much placed around the rest of the park. So that kind of just mixes it in a lot or a little, I guess. And then from there, we've been trying to incorporate some of the foliage that we use. We're using that ground cover piece that I love. And I, I think I learned it's like scavola is what it's called. And it, it looks great, but uh, we've been using that, mixing it in a little bit, trying to get this mixture in here. And you're actually gonna notice that we don't go through and do too much in between some of the path work over here because it really, frankly, didn't need it. I mean, we could have gone super in depth and, and lined it with rocks and put a couple bushes in there, but just having like some blank dirt really adds to the space by not adding anything, if that makes any sense. I really liked how it came out because it, it wasn't like we were just forcing shrubbery into a space that it just didn't need. So that looks great. And then we, of course, had to put some railings on the little slope part of the queue here. And originally it was way too high, so we shrank that down. And that's, I guess, one tip. If I had a tip that I kind of learned along the way in this episode, it is when you're building something that's supposed to be used by people in this game, always bring a person over as a reference point because I didn't do that. And a couple times that actually burns me in this episode uh, where I build something and I think it's great. And then I pull somebody over and it's like twice as high as it should be. And then you have to go through again and shrink everything back down. Luckily moving stuff up and down in this game is really easy, but uh, it's just one of those things you gotta kind of think about. And if you don't think about it and you go ahead and do all of your building, it can kind of bite you later on when you have to go fix it all. But uh, we are just putting this railing in and I love the little railings that are on the top flat part of this. I love that they're not touching each other. I feel like a lot of times when you're building railings, you want them at least in contact with each other and creating this continuous railing. But I feel like up there, just breaking it up slightly just really it, it's got a really awesome feel and I'll show you guys that more in the live portion when we get back over there but we're on the other side of the river now near the exit and to be honest we do all of this work and we build this bridge at the end of this and then no one even uses it because it's not even hooked up just yet so uh, we'll see people 
probably next episode, starting to use this higher path up here, especially when we go ahead and build more stuff down on the other far end of the park where people could use this as a shorter route to get that way. So we'll start to see people going that way. But in the meantime, we've just been putting a bunch of rocks down. Again, lots and lots of rocks. I love adding that little bit of, well, it's not even a little bit, it's a lot of texture in what is an otherwise very smooth surface in the terrain. So having these boulders kind of come off of this and look like they're almost about to fall into the river just adds to that experience of this ride. It's gonna be so awesome when we go onto the POV and see what this ride is all about. Now, I wanted to take some of that influence from the big mountain from behind this where we have some of this Scavola. I, I, I really hope I'm pronouncing that right. But uh, it was falling off of the of, off of the cliff sides, so I, I wanted to incorporate that a little bit. Now, what was really weird about this side of the river is that the path that we have here doesn't give us a lot of room to work with in terms of, of scenery on this side between the path and the ride. So we, of course, put all of these rocks in, and I wanted to kind of force a little bit of green space here and there in this area. So we actually accomplished that by adding a little bit of like a pocket with some rocks to create this like little area that plants could, I guess in theory, be growing out of. So it looks really cool. Now we're using the rope net again on this side to create a bit of a barrier here. Now this is one of those places that you always want to think would have like a, a barrier here. You don't want people accidentally or on purpose jumping off of this cliff and then suing the park. So we wanted to create something more than just like the standard fence over here. So these little rope nets are a really good barrier because they are pretty tall and they also create a very like tough thing to I guess navigate over if you had to, if you were really inclined to. So using that on this side, we kind of double it up at first, but eventually we'll go away from that and just use one because again, we'll bring somebody over and check the, the height of it and figure out that it's way too high. So we only need one of those to make it look good. And this is just accomplishing the, the sense of containing people to the walkway. Now we're gonna jump to the other side of this path and do something more with this whole uh, net situation, which was actually suggested in the chat. But before then, <laughs> we're going through and doing a bunch more rock work. And you can actually kind of see what I was talking about with the green space on the cliffs. It was kind of really tough to try to get some space to work with here, but we ended up doing a little bit. And even though it's not a lot of like plant work up there, it's just enough to add a bit of interest. And it looks so good when you're down at the other end of the queue, like when you're on the lower, the lower section, it looks awesome up there. And it looks like something that if you were standing in line, you could be interested in. I actually had somebody ask me how to build queues in the live stream. And a few of the things that I said was to, obviously you want to zigzag them back and forth, but you also want to kind of hide them away from people as they're on the real path. Like if you're in a theme park and you're about to go on a ride, you find the, en the entrance and you're like, oh, that line doesn't look very long. So you jump in and the next thing you know, it's been like an hour and a half and you've just been winding back and forth. And the the thing about that is it, it you have to hide it really well. And I think for this ride in particular, we've done that really well. We have the whole building that houses a majority of this queue. And then back here, even on like the lower portion of the queue, you can't see it from the main path when you first walk up to this ride. So that looks so good. and. The other thing that you kind of want to do when you're building a queue is add some interest. Like, the thing about theme parks is if the queue is just like a bunch of railings, you get really bored. But what most theme parks have been kind of noticing is that when you put theming around it, it grabs people's attention. And then all of a sudden that hour and a half wait really didn't feel like an hour and a half because they've been entertained this entire time. So I love the work that we've put around these cues because it just adds that little bit of detail or actually a lot of detail. And it's just stuff that would definitely interest people as they're as they're standing in line. It's, it's so nice. And just even the higher section that we have up here looks cool from the lower portion. 
So yeah, it looks like you're gonna be on the ride and you're like, that's gonna be really cool when we get off the ride. And then you'll walk through this and, and you can look down on the queue as a whole and then, you know, you were just there. So it's just that really cool little thing. But anyway, what we've been doing as I've been rambling on is more and more rock work again. Like I said, I think this is almost about it, but we are getting to the point where somebody had suggested this to me in the Twitch chat and that was to use these as kind of like a barrier and keep this whole rock section of this cliff from falling. And I love how this turns out. This is so cool. And you just saw me tilt the one a little bit, like as if the posts have been in the ground for a while and these rocks have been weighing on it so much that it's actually kind of bent the post. It looks so good. But this was just kind of an awkward space. There's a really awkward gap between the Q station building and the cliffside, and there really wasn't a good solution. So actually just filling this little gap in space here with these rocks completely takes that out of the equation. There is no need for us to go through and like squish new like walls in there to try to form something. It, it really takes care of all that. And it looks awesome in the meantime as well. And now we're gonna be starting the bridge that I've been really, really excited about. This bridge we've been planning for a few episodes and originally you saw me actually go over and grab the support from the bridge of the track itself. I wanted to keep that influence in here, but in the end, I actually scrapped that all together. These pieces come out and we're just not using them because it really didn't fit. So we actually, again, have this like very random themed bridge that I, it's, it's not like a, a defining theme. It's just a wooden bridge that looks really awesome. And it kind of ties the entire thing together. When you look at the, the station building all being made out of wood and then this bridge back here. What I would say though, is that the station building kind of looks like it was haphazardly thrown together. Whereas this ends up looking like a very finished bridge as in like some construction company actually went through and built this really well. But uh, I, I guess it's not that bad of a, uh, of a thing to have to contend with here. But uh, it just kind of formed itself as I was building. Like I knew that we had to do something on the bottom because I really didn't want the bottom to just look like a cement bridge. So we went through, we put all of that wood paneling down there and then we did some cross bracing in there. And that's what I was saying way earlier about making things look realistic and function realistically, I guess. Um, the, the cross bracing in there adds some structural rigidity to the bridge. And then after that, it was just a matter of building up some of the sides with some of these beams. And then the rest of it really just kind of took place and took shape here. So we have the railings coming up and these, uh, supports for the railings kind of change here and there. We have all of them are kind of small, but we're actually going through right now and replacing every other one with a larger beam. And it just looks so good. I cannot say how awesome or how much I love this bridge. It really does come out awesome. But I had somebody point out in the chat that this bridge has more pieces than some of my buildings that I've put in. And it's actually true. I actually went through and I measured one of the earliest buildings that we have in the park, which is I think a Hats Fantastic stand, is like 53 blocks or 53 pieces total. This bridge is over 150-ish. So yes, I, I think that's just the evolution of playing this game. You start to kind of learn the pieces. You start to learn how things look and how they look together. And then you start to add that little extra detail here and there. And I think that's just me growing as a bit of a builder, but also me learning what goes with what in this game. Now, to that point, we may eventually, I have talked about this before, we may eventually go in and redo the like entire entrance of this park. Like just completely demolish the existing entrance building and do something a little bit different. I feel like that could be a really cool project, but then again, that could be way down the line. We still have so much in this park that we should build and there is so much more space that we need to build that we'll get to that eventually. Now, keeping up with the level of detail that we've been doing throughout this, I am putting these wooden pillars on the inclines of the bridge, or not pillars, but the, the wooden support structure and all that kind of stuff in there, even though you can't even see some of it, 
just because it needed to be there. I mean, obviously they would have had it if they built it for real. And that's just one of those things that even though only a portion of this little like slab of wood is seen, it needs to be there just to make this whole thing complete. So it's one of those messages that I'd get out to you guys. If you feel like you can't build stuff really well in this game, try to add that detail. And then there's like a point, especially in this build too, uh, you, you add too much detail, it's not good. But if you don't add enough detail, it's not good either. So you want to get to that point where you're, you're sitting back and you're like, maybe one little extra piece will do it. And then you, you try it. And then sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And that's actually where these little, the, the attachment points came into play. We needed something. There was just something missing from this bridge. And adding that into that looks so good. Like it looks like these had to be there to assemble this bridge. And I love that you can turn it around and it's a flat like plate with some metal screws in it. And that just adds that tiny little detail to this bridge that makes it look awesome in the end. But the final thing that we're doing here in this time lapse before we kick it over to the live portion is adding some lighting. Now we haven't been doing a lot of lighting in the park. Again, I do need to go through and do that. But this bridge just needed something because it, it felt so close to being done that I just wanted to finish it. So we go through and add this little bit of lighting and then that's it. We don't even connect the path up. But uh, we'll, I'll show you that as we kick it over here to the live portion. All right, we are live back in Cedar Flags and we are back at the bridge that we were just working on. So yes, even though this bridge technically goes to nowhere right now, it's probably one of the more beautiful things that we've built in this park, I guess so far. I mean, I think so, I don't know. Maybe I'm just really obsessing over this bridge, but I love all of the little intricate detail work that went into this. Like all of the the planks that had to get built up to create all of this just look so good. And I just cannot say enough about these little attachment points that we use to act as brackets that go into this. Now, underneath the bridge, we have these little cross sections here. Now the planks go one way and then these beams go the other way. And that is the structural support for the bridge. Uh, I had kind of started to talk a little bit about like thinking like a construction worker when you're building stuff in this game. That's one of those little things that you kind of got to do. And that is just add that little bit of detail work to the bottom of the bridge, even though no one's really ever going to see it unless you're on the ride. But uh, we still have a long way to go before we get Alpine River Rush officially launched, even though it technically is open. We still have a lot of the track to go and to detail around, which we will be doing in the next episode. We also probably should detail a little bit out on the main path around the station a little bit more because some spots like over here, we don't have anything just yet. And of course, we still need a ride sign. So we'll be getting to that as well. But yeah, we still have a lot to look at here. Now, I love the queue that we have, but I I did I talk about it a lot in the time lapse, and that was how the plants kind of just don't fit the theme of this area. Now, I, I was kind of looking at this a little bit, but I think when you're down here, you barely notice how different everything is from the rest of the park. When you're down here, you're kind of contained in your own little world, I think. And I think that is working to our advantage because we can put whatever plant we want down here and it's just going to look like it belongs here. And then, like, as soon as you get up here, it's definitely different. Like, you can tell that these are definitely a little darker green than the rest of the plant work that we just put in. But I think on a, a guest level, this all works very well. Now, I may go in and try to limit the amount of these trees that you see from like back here. Just a little bit less I think is better. Um, but we can start doing that a little bit later. I'm not really sure I'm all that concerned about it. And maybe I'm making too big of a deal out of this and you guys have been yelling at me in the comments about who cares what plants go where as long as they all kind of look good in the area. I guess I can get that mentality as well. But uh, I really, I, it's kind of confusing that there's bamboo here. That's the only thing I think is kind of weird is because 
just bamboo doesn't grow in alpine areas. Unless I'm completely wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure I'm not. But uh, yeah, it's just a little weird, but it needed to go here. And that's because this little like half wall containing thing we have here was always meant to be like a flower bed. But I had really no other options because, I mean, I could have put some of these like little tall round bushes in. It just probably wouldn't have looked as good. And it looks like we have like sand growing here. Or not, sand doesn't grow. But it looks like we have sand here and then this bamboo growing out of it. Which I don't think is even how bamboo grows. I'm pretty sure it grows out of like water itself. But whatever. <laughs> it's fine. I, I don't know. It, it really fits well in that area, so I guess it's not that big of a deal. I love these tall trees that we got in the adventure pack as well. And even though they are really different from the, the rest of the trees that we have, they fit really well in these areas. You can kind of see them from the front side of this building, but when you get to the back, you really notice. Or actually, you probably don't even notice. It kind of blends into the woodwork a little bit. And it's really cool because it grows up over all of the other stuff around it. And I love how tall it is because you can actually have it growing over this building without really clipping through it too much, even if it is at all. I think it might just barely be clipping in spots. It just doesn't look that bad. Now, obviously, we have a lot of stonework around here. And I say stonework even though it's, it's just rocks that are, are naturally there and I use naturally loosely. But I love these little rope walls on the side of the of the uh, ride here. It looks like we're trying to contain stuff a little bit. And that was the real point of them. And that's why they're on this weird angle that they're on. It looks like they're trying to keep rocks from falling in. And I actually had somebody in the chat say, put a couple rocks falling down to make it look like a couple of them kind of maybe made it through the net. And that's what we did here. And it just looks pretty awesome. And it's just one of those really small details that you probably don't even notice unless you were told about it. Now, the railings that we have over here on the incline, I, I love how these came out just because there's something about it. They're, they're individual fences that aren't connected continuously, and it just looks so good. Um, it, it adds to the space while also taking up the room. And I love that we kind of carry the same feeling over onto the bridge, and that all ties itself together as well. Now, when you move down, you obviously have the rope hue retaining walls. I don't really know what you want to call these, but uh, they carry on the rope theme that we had on the inside of this building. And I love this one little spool of rope back here, as if, like, this is the spool that we used to do all of this work around here. And I don't know, just the subtlety of that in there it really adds to the place. But I think think guys that's probably about it for this uh little bit uh, to show off i mean there's really not much else we had a couple bins placed down around here although i tried to place some of the benches they just were snapping to the edge and since we have all this rock work over here there's really no way to put them in nice and effectively so i kind of just excluded that uh i did want to ask you guys if you think we should put uh, a different path like texture on this and right now I just have it differentiated a little bit with this other path I also think the red almost looks kind of cool on this because it matches the the deep color of the wood uh, although we could all also just do these wooden planks now if I were to do the wood I'd probably go through and use the same paneling we did on the other side or the underside rather because as of now, this does not actually line up properly, like perpendicularly. And so we'd probably have to tweak that. So if you guys want to see this bridge with a wooden path over it or the path that we had or some other option, I'm not really sure. You guys can let me know. Or if it's really not that important, then just tell me it's not that important. But yeah, I think moving forward, we're going to be doing a lot more of the detail work around this area. And we're going to be doing that over on Twitch, so I have to plug the Twitch channel. The link, as always, will be in the description of this video, so you guys can go and check that out. And, of course, follow me on Twitter, because that is where I will notify you guys when we go live over on Twitch. And you guys can come hang out, suggest stuff for the build, and see the process. It's definitely a different experience when you watch Twitch, because it's not as refined as the content over here. So, maybe that's not your thing, that's fine as well. But I'm hoping to see you guys there, 
And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode.